plenty of animals. Mm -hmm. So if you have a recessive gene animal like a spider, or like a, uh, uh, like the clown, right? <laughs> Um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get this guy out because he's a great example of a normal, but he's also a pet, pet for something, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So this, this is a normal. Okay, he's he's pet pied, but he's. This is what you would encounter in the wild in Africa. This is, and males generally don't get this big. <laughs> he's he's 2,200 grams solid, um, and he's about four years old. Um, he's he's part of a project that we're working on. But you can see the colors. Um, I know a lot of you guys were here earlier and have been in, and and we've had a bunch of different animals out during this. And so there's going to be some stuff that you may have seen before, some stuff that might be new to you. We are pretty heavy on pastel, which is what's called a codon. So this is a pastel. Notice the yellow and all that. This is what they call a codon. So if you breed this guy with a normal female, Statistically, half of the clutch of eggs should be pastel, half of them should be normal. The cool thing about codons is they have a super form, and the reason that I showed pastel first is because we have, we were lucky enough, to put the shed and fired up. Well, we were lucky enough to hit a super pastel in our first clutch. Along with twins, we hit a super. <laughs> so, you notice the color difference. Now this guy's about this guy's about a year old. I got him at Petco, actually, believe it or not, Petco. Um, this guy's normally a lot brighter, but he is in shed. It'll be his second shed, and then he'll be ready to go to a new home. You no, know, he doesn't really quite fit into our into any of our our programs. How, how much would that little guy cost? Talk to me afterwards. Okay. Because um, I'm not really exactly sure where we're going to price those guys at yet. So, a lot of the animals that we have are codons or incomplete dominance, depends on, on what school of thought you're on on that. Um, another one, this guy's a crowd favorite because of the high contrast. So, this is. Um, the calico, or they've been referred to as sugars. Um, you notice the dark top and then the white. So these guys make some really cool combinations in some animals. Um, we're not going to use him for our breeding program this year, but next year I have a bumblebee female that I'm going to put into, and hopefully we get some calories or some calico pastel spiders. What's that? <laughs> I've got a lot of that. There's a lot of animals out there you could buy that would be a lot of cheaper than what it would take to take that. <laughs> um, yeah. This guy here is a good example of two co-dominants. So he's a, this is a black pewter, so he's a black pastel and pastel. They're both, they're, they're actually different genes. Black pastels do a lot of darkening and then they mess with the pattern a lot. They make the pattern go all kinds of crazy. Hold on, that's a black pastel female. If she's in a decent enough mood. So one thing you guys notice, whenever we're reaching into these tubs, we're, we're doing this. Oh, she ovulated, that's awesome. So this girl here is gravid, and that's pretty, that's, that's cool. So, but this is what a black pastel is. This is a really good black pastel. And she's been paired with a fire male, and she's been paired with a cinnamon male. So, 
the weird thing about snakes is both of them could father some egg, some of the eggs. Um, they could all be from one. So we won't know until she lays, until they hatch. So normally they aren't this thick. She's yeah, that's that's exciting. So yeah, I didn't finish what I was saying about why we put our hands over them. The most often time when people get bit, it isn't that their snake is aggressive, it isn't that their snake is mean. This guy isn't mean at all. But um, they get a little cage defensive, little territorial. That's that's part of how they are. Um, Well, here's the cinnamon that, that that black pastel has been bred to. He's one that I know I can reach in there anytime and not get bit by. But he's a big animal, and these guys deserve respect. So when you when you reach into the tub, getting them out of that defensive mode, which is what, you, what, what you're doing, and he's getting a little tense. Basically, just letting them know, like the reason they're called a ball python, actually, is because when they get like that, when you get them out, there's the okay. This little girl here is incredibly cage defensive. If I if I start doing this, well, now she's out of defense mode and she's into preserve myself mode. But you, if you're in the front row, you just heard her hiss. So they're called ball pythons because when they get scared, come on, they'll curl up in a ball. She's, not, not today. She's a little testy, but um, this girl will bite you. When you, if you just hold her cage open and stick your hand in, she'll bite you. She, she's an incredibly strong feeder, but that's why I do that. That's why I put my hand up there like that, just to get her out of that mode. So they'll all look like this guy? Yeah. Sort of. Kind of. He's kind of flat right now. <laughs> so there's over 2,000 recognized visual genetic morphs in ball pythons. That's why they're so fun. So I'm going to let Dave talk about recessives because we have a couple of pretty cool recessive projects that we're working on. And I will get Leah out. So recessive genes when it comes to like the normal ball python, that's what they all kind of revert back to. Um, so the recessive genes when you end up breeding recessive with a codominant gene. Um, like he was talking about with like the pastel, for instance. Um, if you breed a recessive gene with the pastel, um, what you're going to get is a het. That's what the, the terminology that you'll hear a lot going around is het. And it'll be 100% het. That means it's a hidden trait in that snake. So if we were to take um, a clown, for instance, and that's what we're pulling out here. This is actually my clown pastel. This is Princess Leia. Um, this is part of one of the projects I'm working on. And so if you take a clown and put it with a pastel, um, you're actually going to get a pastel with a head clown. It will be 100% head. So in order to get that to show, you got to turn around and bring it back again to another clown that's already visual. So it's a, I'm sorry, or another head, my apologies. So um, sometimes once you bring them down enough, you can get into the 50% heads and stuff like that to where you actually have a chance of getting it and won't always be, out, won't always be there. But um, this is actually a visual pastel clown. Um, so that's that's where it takes so many years. You got to think in order to get them up to size to breed, it takes two to three years, and then if you bring them together. Then you've got a head clown or a head pastel, that, or sorry, pastel with a head clown in it. Then you have to wait for that to grow up and breed it back into it again, or breed it into another clown to get the clown to come out again. So I mean, this right here is probably five to six years of breeding just to get that one snake to get those colors on that snake. Um, that's why these projects take so long. That's why there's so many going is because it's just, it takes so long. If you want to wait for one, one group to come out, it's going to take me six years. And we need to have a bunch so we have things rolling so you don't get frustrated. Talk about the end goal of this project. All right, so this, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a nerd, plain and simple. 
I love Star Wars. I've always loved Star Wars. That's like go to Disneyland. That's all I do is walk around and hopefully find stormtroopers. That's actually what I'm looking to make is the stormtrooper project. Um, it's basically uh, you take a clown pastel. Oh, that's right, my example. Yeah. Um, so then you mix it with an example, and hopefully what happens is you get a black and white snake. It's just, and don't look at me because I know what you have. I don't <laughs> Um, but I just there's something about it that was one of the first things I saw when we started doing some black and white snake. They are gorgeous. The only difference with that is, is that there's a genetic morph with that that actually makes them darker as they get older. All the ball pythons, for the most part, as they get older, they start to get duller. So that's why when they're purchased, they usually purchase when they're, they're babies because they're so vibrant. That's what people like is that vibrant color that pops off of them. But as they get older, they start to dull out. I'm trying to find the color one second. No. No <laughs> plants sooner or later this one. So the pastels that we like so much, this is what they can look like as they get older, so they do lose their colors. As you saw, the other pastel that we pulled out had a lot of yellow in it. There is still yellow going along the edge here, but it's actually, as you can see, it's starting to dole out and kind of get that brown color. Most of the snakes, as they get older, that's what they're going to do. They're going to dole out and start losing their color. Well, the difference is, is that with the stormtrooper, there's something genetically off, so to speak, with it, is that it actually gets darker. Instead of brightening up and starting to dole out, it actually gets darker over time. Yeah, the black, the, it starts bleeding out and spreading. Um, we're also uh, kind of kicking around the idea at some point we're actually going to do the pie ball on That's many, many, many years down the road. So that's just that's my end game right now. 